Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. I hope you're happy, healthy and well. It is time for a new book review today and I thought I would do a short book from Dostoevsky's Notes from Underground. Now I know that some of you ha know that I'm reading War and Peace and I'm onto the epilogue of Tolstoy's War and Peace. I've got about 80 more pages to go before I finish that. But I wanted a change of pace. I wanted a change of reading over the weekend. And I picked this book up and I'm glad I did. And I'm going to put it out there to say that even though we are only still in January, I would say that this book is going to be one of my favourite books of 2023 and in fact I would say it's going to be one of my one of my favorite books of all time and I'm kicking myself as to why I haven't read Dostoevsky earlier on even though I recognize this book when I was growing up my father had this book on the bookshelves it isn't this same one but we had Dostoevsky on the shelves but I'd never read it, even though he did say to me, read Russian literature, read Russian literature. As a teenage girl, you're not going to read Russian literature. You have this image of it being heavy, dark, depressive. Why would, why would a teenage girl read in, uh, Russian literature? But as a 50 plus year old, angry menopausal woman, my God, this guy, this character in here, pretty much resonated with me because he too felt all the shite that is in the world and he too wanted and needed a way to kind of break free from it and explode in the emotion which he did right at the end of this. So what is this book about? It is about a guy, he's an unnamed author, he's about 40 years old, he's had a tough life, he's... Um, he was an ex-civil servant and he's getting his thoughts down on paper and he's presenting the first half of the book to a group of readers. He's calling us gentlemen and he's talking, he's philosophizing, I guess, about the how man can be unreasonable at times, how man can sometimes act out of his own volition and not out of reason. And this unnamed character seems to think that he's better than everyone else. He's much more educated, much more intellectual, but he's really very poor. He has this big, highfalutin sense of self, but I would say he's not self-aware, but I would say that at the end, he is self-aware. I don't know, I'm swapping and changing. I would say that this person is so self-aware, but his actions, are so unreasonable and even though he understands that he's being unreasonable and st stupid in some senses but he can't help himself and he can't stop himself so does that make him self-aware or does that make him really stupid I don't know anyway this is the confusing aspect of the book so initially we get the first half of the book we get him talking and philosophizing about the differences between, I guess, volition and reason, how man can somehow act never in his self-interest. Um, or if he does, if he does, then he's somehow fake, he's not authentic to himself. And he, the author, could see through that, I guess, the fakeness of people. So because he understands that truth, he feels he's better than everyone else and as a result he is mean to them he's he's pretty he's he's an obnoxious character who self-grandizes in so many ways but i guess he sets the scene in this first half of the book where he recounts i guess and philosophizes about man and the actions that they do to the second part of the book where he's recounting his stories and his stories link to the first half of the book. And in fact, when I finished reading the second half of the book, I went back and reread the first half because really everything that he was doing in the second half recounting the stories was pretty much exemplified and explained in the first half. 
But the beauty of this book is that, you know, where you want to see the character uh, for being correct or being right, there are aspects of him that you don't like and yet could see the reason why he is like that or why he thinks like that or why he does like that. And then you start to believe, shit, I am that character. There are times, there are many times where I concoct these massive stories in my head. Why did this person say this? Why did this person do this to me? And so you concoct these stories of, right, next time I, I will say this, or next time that person does that, I will do this just to see how, you know, how he would react. And so this unnamed character does exactly that. He's the type of person who feels wronged by so many minor things that could be said or stated or somehow not even stated, but he'll make him so huge in his head that he'll concoct these stories and he'll make himself be the person who has been wronged. And so what he does then is he creates and makes worse these actions just so he could get a rise out of people, just so he could see a reaction. And then it takes him down another tangent where he's still constantly thinking about that action. And one example was he really just wants to be heard, to be listened, to be understood, to be acknowledged, to be visible to people. And yet he feels as a poor person of no rank, of the clothes that he is, wears, that he's insignificant. Also, he keeps talking about his face, how he's so ugly. And yet, even though he has this huge, big, noted, like, view of himself, he also uh, has a very lowly, low opinion of himself. And one day he sees a fight happening at a bar. He goes in just to kind of participate, to be involved in life. And this policeman just kind of picks him up from his shoulders and just moves him aside to get to the ruckus and stop it. And this unnamed author gets so offended by that small action that he was insignificant. He was this little fly that was just kind of pushed aside. He was not important in this grand scheme. And I thought, oh my God, you know, in life that little actions like that kind of that other people do to us, that make us feel insignificant as well. I kind of felt for this character. I felt for him. But in the end, what he does is he creates this, he follows the policeman home. He stalks him. He gets to know his pattern and he concocts this big story that he's going to actually bump into this policeman and, you know, make him see the truth that he is an equal. He is someone who is worthy in this world to be an equal and he wants to bump him on the road. And so one day he does bump him, but, you know, it's not it's not as big as what the other, the, the policeman just goes on, He's been posted elsewhere and he's gone. And then, and you go, well, what'd you do that for? Like, what? Okay, so how does that, how, what does that make you feel? And yet what he does, which is what exactly as humans, what we would do, we would move on to the next thing. We would find out the next thing that, that blights us. And so there were elements like this, and I, I found this uh, story quite funny. The writing was hilarious. And just the way that Dostoevsky wrote, I was chuckling throughout it. And yet there were times where I thought to myself, do I feel sorry for this character? Or is it just nasty? Is he an idiot? He's an idiot, isn't he? He has to be an idiot, but he's not because... I can actually understand what he's going on about. And it was only towards three quarters I was thinking to, to my in my head, I thought, shit, you know, if he could only just state the truth, if he could only just express the truth of what he's really, really wanting to say or really, really wanting to express and acknowledge, to have this outburst, and sure enough, he does. And he does it in the most spectacular way. And he does it in such a way that I started 
bawling my eyes out. I started crying. This book moved me so much. And I started to think to myself, why did this book move me so much? It's because I understood the character. Uh, I understood these, his intentions. Uh, I understood that he couldn't express himself properly. And yet he had this kind of, this thing that he was better than everyone else. He was much more intellectual or educated. He could see the intentions of people. Uh, and yet he was really, really lonely. He was lonely and he was unacknowledged. He felt invisible. Which brings me to another book that I love so much. It is my favourite book of all time. And yet it is also one of the most detested books that others find. You either like it or you hate it. And that book is J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye, which I read about a few years ago. And that book moved me so much simply because I'd resonated with the character. And I think when I read this book, I thought to myself, for those who have read J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye, if the Holden Caulfield character in The Catcher in the Rye had grown up and was Russian, he would be the character in this book. Everything that Holden Caulfield didn't like about that world, the fakeness, um, the fact that he really needed a voice, he wanted a voice, he needed to be seen, and yet he felt so invisible around the world. This is exactly the same feeling that I got reading Notes from Underground. So Dostoevsky had created this Holden Caulfield character on steroids, or should I say that Salinger had actually somehow come up with a character, an unnamed character who was in, like in this book, but made him a young boy to, to be in The Catcher in the Rye, about... Man, it was good. Shit, this was so good. It was really good. <laughs> I am now going to read Dostoevsky's other books. Um, I've got Crime and Punishment right here. I've also got Brothers Karamazov. But, man, this one floored me. This one floored me. Notes from Underground, Dostoevsky. It was... Fantastic. Read it. Love it. Let me know what you think. Sorry, I just went speechless after a while because this book, this book has a lot of themes here that make me sit and think long and hard afterwards about, about saying your truth, about being visible, about acting from a place of truth acting from a place of honesty, um, but not always thinking that you're better than everyone else. Everyone else has their own story. Everyone else has their own issues to deal with. Everyone, everyone does things for their own reasons. Everyone's got intentions. And we know that. We know that. But we don't have to call it out on it. We don't have to kind of make ourselves better than they are. Because it, overall, in the end, we're all the same. Anyway, that's what I got out of this brilliant book. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Bye for now.